Hello, this is Poor Nils with Random Artech, and this is part two of a mini game tutorial series in Unity and Blender. So today we're going to be talking about the prefab creation and scene setup. It's a little bit of a shorter tutorial, so it's not too bad. We're going to be covering how to create prefabs, talking about box colliders, mesh colliders, uh, prefabs, and rigid bodies, and then we're also going to be doing a scene setup. So basically, placement of objects. Uh, talking about the transformations, uh, pivot points, snapping options. It's pretty straightforward and pretty easy, and so sit back, enjoy, and I hope you learned something. All right, so here we have our scene opened up. I went ahead and just add the water here, and I created some folders, some models and a prefab folder. So here I have all the models that we exported, and we're going to be propagating the prefabs with prefabs. So with the field selected, go ahead and do a Mesh Collider. And then do the same thing for Mountains, Mesh Collider. And River, we don't really want a Collider. We want the arrows to go in and sink and just be gone. So no Collider. Now to create the prefabs, go ahead and go to the prefabs and just drag and drop. So got the Mountains, Field, and River. So we might change some scripts, so we just leave it kind of as it is. Now I'm going to create an Empty for the player and put it in the empty. Oh, actually this isn't for the player, it's just um, it's, it's an easy way to organize these different things. So I added the field accidentally. So now F will zoom in, way too much junk, so you can kind of hide them with that selection right there. So here's the arrow. The white box shows where it's going to go as you pull it back. I'm just tying everything else so that I can actually see the arrow. Now it's the, it's the pulled distance that's going to be. So I'm going to do Box Collider, and hit that little Edit button there, and now you can actually... It's giving you the whole shape where the whole white thing is. We don't want the, the Collider to be that big, so we're going to drag it to about right there, and then drag it a little bit past the arrow. That, that's a little too far. I'd probably put it just right at the arrowhead, because as it hits into the ground, we do want to stick in a little bit. Now, what I do want to do is change the size. So 0.01... 0 0.01 for the X and the Y, um, and then we want to be at the center, so probably zero. Yep, zero is where we want it. And then zero here, and that's the collider. Go ahead and create a prefab out of the arrow, and there we go. Now I can just delete this because I have a prefab. Now I'm going to unhide the bow. Now those don't really need colliders, so just drag it in individually. So here I have my bushes, my bows, my flowers. Now I could have dragged them all at the same time. No, actually you can't when creating a prefab, so you do have to do it uh, individually. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a tartar. So we're going to add a collider later, so I'm just going to drag that in. And now the trees, we do want mesh colliders on these. So select all of these and then just mesh collider, and it'll actually add it to all of them. So now we can just drag these in. Like so. Now we have prefabs for all of these. Now I'm just going to unhide everything like that and the directional light. There we go. Now I do want to create a player, put them about in the middle right there. Uh, so that way I have a lot of variety. You can see the mountains, you can see the rivers. So create an empty called player. Uh, I deleted a camera for some reason, so I'm just going to add a camera to the child as a child of the player. Going to drag out a game, see what they see. So I can move it up and down until it's where I want. So six feet tall. How tall is that going to be? Right about there. Now I do want to rotate this. So I get an interesting view. So I'm just looking for something interesting that I want to start the game off as. Right about there is probably the most interesting view that I'm going to get. I like it. You have the water, you have the hill, you have a mountain. So now that's going to that's gonna start us off there. So I'm just going to make the area here as opposed to trying to propagate the whole field because that would just be long and boring. So as I, as I move this, there's zero snapping. If you hit V, it will snap by vertex. It's really kind of wonky. Shift control will snap based on anything with a mesh collider. Now it doesn't snap perfectly, but you can see that it's snapping pretty good. 
I could change it from pivot to center and it's doing uh, different types of snapping. So you can change it from global to world, a lot of different things. So again, shift control, center, and you can see it's it's snapping to the pivot point that we had in Blender. So we can actually go back to Blender if we need to and change the pivot point if it's not snapping correctly. Local kind of does it in the average, which I don't really like very much. So I'm going to go to pivot, uh, shift control, and it's going to snap. And I do want my game scene so I can kind of see where I'm putting these trees based on the player. Shift control, I'm going to snap it just over there. It's going to drag a couple things out. Shift control to snap. Shift control to snap. Now, if you ever have duplicates, you don't want them to face the same direction. So I can duplicate these and then rotate them later. So, oh, <laughs> got to make sure you get the right axis. There you go. And then I can scale it. So I'm hitting WER to basically scale, rotate, pivot. Shift control. Move a bush over here. Now, you can keep doing this individually, and it actually works pretty fast. But if you want to, you could actually make a big group of trees like this. So I'm just going to put like five trees or more. There we go. So I have a, several trees. Just rotating them randomly. Going to go ahead and scale some of these up. And it's looking pretty good. I'm kind of sounding like Bob Ross a little bit, right? It's like happy little trees looking pretty good. <laughs> so I apologize. I just created an empty here. I'm going to just drag these different trees into it. So shift select and drag those into the group. I don't know why some of these trees have empty game objects, but I can just delete those. Now I could create a prefab from this and basically use it kind of like a group that I can just throw out whenever I want and then move those individually. Put some bushes here. Shift control to move those. I'm, I'm going to change the rotation later. Now I'm just going to go ahead and change the rotation so it's not so uniformed. And now I can start to add some flowers as well. So I'm just basically duplicating this and making more. I'm just making some small ones around the place. I'm not really liking how those flowers look. I might change those later. So I like the flowers next or in the bushes. It's looking a little bit better. So they're kind of grouped just too close together to look very good, but that's okay. We can change that blender at any time we want to. So I'm just trying to put these where I like them. I like them kind of next to the bushes. Like that. And now I can just shift select these and put them into the group of trees again. Apply to update the prefab. Now this whole thing is one prefab. I can shift, uh, shift, control, shift, and it's going to be grouping based on the center. Because now if I put it somewhere, you can see that you know, some things are underneath and some things are on top. So I can basically just move the individual things like this by hitting shift select, or excuse me, shift control. And it doesn't take very long. So after you get that done, I, I went ahead and skipped forward because, I mean, you don't want to watch me do that for all the different assets. I just added a target, and I'm trying to figure out where I want it. So this is the player's view. I'm going to rotate it so it's facing them, move it up, and maybe put a tree next to it. 
kind of scaling it up, putting it where I want, put some bushes. So we want the foreground to be the most interesting. The background can kind of fade into the back, but what you see right here is going to be the most important. So just adding some variety here and kind of liking what that looks like. Hate that patch of flowers just sitting there, so I'm going to go ahead and move that. Where do I want it? I like it close to the bushes, maybe even less far up. And I can also increase the size of the target by just scaling this up as well. So as we add a prefab to the targets, it's going to be fine. So there we go. So your homework for today is very easy. It's just basically flesh out the scene. Uh, you can go back into Blender, change some of the pivot points of the faulty models if, if it's not pivoting the way you want, namely the flowers I'd want to change. Um, fill out the scene so it looks awesome. Put trees everywhere. Um, put bushes and flowers and just make it interesting. And then put several different targets in different areas. Try and put them in, in interesting areas so that as you rotate around, you can see these different targets. And that's it. Thank you so much. If you like this video, go ahead and... Thumbs up if you would like to subscribe, that always helps. And also check us out on Patreon. Thanks for your time.